Okay, let's talk about forces on curved surfaces. We've been talking about forces on planar or, or straight surfaces. Um, and the equations we use to find forces um, or to analyze forces on planar surfaces was Fp is equal to Pa and Cp is equal to uh, gamma times I of X times the cosine of beta. But these two formulas are only used for flat surfaces. We can only use them for flat surfaces. But what if we have um, a curved surfaces? So say we had something like this. Say we had maybe here's a ground and then here we have like a little hinge and then here we have a curved gate and it's holding it's holding maybe all this water or something and there's a force P we'll call it force P that's pushing against this gate to keep it from falling down and letting the water uh, run past the gate there what if we have something like that? Well, we know that this water on this curved surface creates a pressure distribution, and the pressure at the bottom is obviously the greatest. Um, very near the, the surface is almost zero, so the pressure distribution looks something like this. Right? Yeah. So, that's what the pressure distribution looks like on the surface, and that's what we're going to study next. So the best way I can explain this is using, um, not really an example, but a scenario maybe. Um, say we had, again, we had a ground, right? I'll just, it's rigid, so it's, it's not moving. And then we had maybe a wall up here that's also rigid. And then down here at the opening here, we have a gate that's curved. It's just a flat gate. Or not a flat gate, but it's a curved gate. And then here what we can, it's hinged at A, and then there's contact at B. So the wall is actually, um, it's not drawn correctly, but the wall is holding the gate from falling this way. And let's say we fill this up with water. So this is H2O. And we can say maybe maybe we have a, a radius. We'll call it R. So it's a, it's a perfect quarter circle. And maybe the height is, I don't know, 3R. So three times the radius. Um, we can actually use two methods to analyze the situation. So say the question was saying, or asking, hey, what's the force at B? Well, how can we figure that out? We can figure it out if it was a flat gate from A to B, but this time it's a curved gate. So what we can actually do is, actually there's two methods. Uh, we'll call this method one. The first method is we can actually take this whole chunk this whole chunk and draw a free body diagram of that so it would be the gate plus this quarter circle of chunk of water and that would look something like this so we have the water and then we have actually I'll just draw it in the same colors um, we have this red gate right so we have water and the gate and here we have a pressure distribution we can solve that, right? Because this now becomes a flat surface. We can use this equation. And then down here, we have another pressure distribution, but it's it's looking like it's looking something like this. And and now we can use these two equations to solve for the FP and CP here. And then we have uh, the weight of the water. We have the weight of the gate. I'll we'll call it W sub G. And then we have the hinge reactions, or the pin reactions, we'll call it A, Y, A, X. And then we have the force here at B. And bam, you just drew a free body diagram of the gate plus the water. And using, you'll know what FP is, or you'll know what F, uh, 
these two forces and this couple is, you may need to find the reactions at A, you may need to find the reaction at B, you may need to find the weight of the gate, and you'll need to find the weight of the water. And that, that's method one. Method two is, I'll call it method two. Method two. Method two. If we look at the gate and the gate only, so let's just draw the gate. We know we have a reaction here at B. We have a reaction here at A, Y, A, X, right? That's just the hinge reactions. And then we know we have the weight of the gate it's somewhere there. Um, and then we, t we took out the water, right? So, but that water, this water, this water chunk, and this, this whole water up here, is actually creating a pressure distribution on this gate, right? And, and it looks something like this. And what's neat about this is that we can actually look at this pressure distribution and we can say that these forces created by this pressure distribution, is, they, they are concurrent forces. And what are concurrent forces? Well, if you remember from statics, they're forces that all meet at one point. And in this case, if you were to draw each of these forces out, it looks like they meet up here. And this right here is called the point of concurrency. Boy, I don't know what that was. Uh, but this point right here is called the point of concurrency because all these forces create... Oh, there it goes again. These forces that are created here, they're all concurrent forces. So they're forces that meet up at exactly one point. And for the rest of these problems, we'll actually be looking at only concurrent forces on curved surfaces. But what's neat about this is that we can replace this pressure distribution by... Um, reaction forces or concurrent resultant forces at the point of concurrency. And so let me, let me explain that a little bit better. Um, if we drew that gate again, um, we'd have, you know, B, we'd have the weight of the gate, we'd have, you know, AX, AY, or AY, AX. And then this pressure distribution from the water, we can say, well, these forces in the vertical direction, they're going, most of them are going down. So at the point of concurrency, we can draw a downwards resultant force, we'll call that V. And then the rest of the forces looks like it's going horizontally, right? So now we have a horizontal resultant force, and we have a vertical resultant force, which we call H and V, respectively, created by these concurrent forces, or this pressure distribution. And then using this instead, we can, you know, solve it this way. We can say, oh, well, if we took the moment about here at A, we can use H and V, which in most cases we calculate, to find maybe the reaction at B, or we can use that to find the weight of a gate if that's not given. And and that, that's actually one of the tricks, and we'll go into the next video about this, but we have two methods in summary. Uh, the first method is to take the gate and a simple, uh, easy chunk of water, which we can calculate forces. Or we can look at the gate itself, and then look at the pressure distribution caused by the water, or the liquid, or the fluid acting on that curved surface. And replace this pressure distribution with resultant forces at the point of concurrency and then bring that back you know to the free body diagram of the gate and then solve for whatever we need to solve for and we'll we'll look at this method too a little bit more in the next video